In the annals of anime history, one name stands out as a luminary whose contributions have left a great impression on the industry. Yoshiyuki Tomino, born on November 5th, 1941, in the wake of World War II, Tomino's journey from a humble childhood to becoming a visionary anime director was a captivating tale of passion, perseverance, and the transformative power of media. Yoshiyuki Tomino spent his formative years in the aftermath of war-torn Japan. Growing up in the Shinigawa ward of Tokyo, Tomino experienced the harsh realities of post-war reconstruction, a period marked by economic struggles and social upheaval. His family faced the challenges of rebuilding amidst the remnants of a defeated nation. The young Tomino navigated through this turbulent environment with a spirit that would later become a hallmark of his storytelling. Yoshiyuki Tomino's father was involved in the field of military engineering, a profession that likely exposed Tomino to the technological advancements and strategic thinking prevalent in post-war Japan. The aftermath of World War II left an indelible mark in the nation, with Japan focusing on reconstruction and technological development. Tomono's exposure to his father's work may have provided him with insights into the complexities of military technology and the socio-political dynamics of the time. Tomono's storytelling often incorporates themes of conflict, societal unrest, and the ethical implications of scientific advancements. The intricate world-building and attention to political and military aspects of his narratives reflect a deep understanding possibly influenced by his father's professional background. Moreover, Tomino's franchise's emphasis on the human cost of war, the impact on civilian lives, and the blurred lines between good and evil can be traced back to the complex geopolitical landscape that characterized the post-war period in Japan. The questioning of authority, critique of militarization, and the exploration of the consequences of unchecked technological progress are recurring motifs in Tomino's works. Think of it this way. So you say things like learn from the past or learn from history. Is there a politician who has learned from history? A soldier? None right. During wartime Japan, politicians would bow down to the military, and before you know it, there were no politicians. And then everything was left to the military. Everyone is like that. I don't think adults who want to be politicians or do anything in the political arena are that uneducated. I think they have too little common sense. There's nothing cool about war. After all, war must not happen. However, unfortunately, we will never be rid of war thanks to the delusions of those who yearn for it. The concept of space colonization was a prevalent theme in Tomino's approach to science fiction. Tomino was fascinated by the idea of a future where humanity had expanded its presence beyond Earth, leading to conflicts between space colonies and an Earth Federation. This theme reflected the space race and the fascination with the possibilities of space exploration during the late 20th century, after the iconic launch of satellites like Sputnik in the 1950s. Raised in a family that valued education, Tomino demonstrated an early interest in literature and the arts. His insatiable curiosity led him to explore various forms of media, from classic literature to radio broadcasts. Amidst the post-war cultural renaissance, Japan saw a surge of interest in science fiction and entertainment. This fertile ground played a crucial role in shaping Tomino's imaginative inclinations, fostering a deep appreciation for speculative fiction that would manifest prominently in his later works. One cannot dissect Yoshiyuki Tomino's early life without acknowledging the profound impact of the media he consumed during his youth. As the Japanese entertainment landscape underwent a transformative period, Tomino found solace and inspiration in the burgeoning world of manga. Pioneering works like Osamu Tezuka's Astro Boy and Mitsutero Yokoyama's Tetsujin 28 Go ignited Tomino's fascination with the possibilities of storytelling within the animated medium, as well as the running theme of robotics. In addition to the burgeoning manga scene, Tomino avidly devoured the works of renowned science fiction authors such as Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. These literary influences expanded his horizons, introducing him to speculative concepts, intricate world building, and the potential for exploring profound philosophical themes through narrative storytelling. Asimov's Foundation series, which explores the concept of psychohistory and the rise and fall of civilizations, and Clark's exploration of space and future technologies likely influenced Tomino's storytelling and world-building in the Gundam series. That's the nature of fantasy stories. Because fantasy stories were originally told to give people hope, they're pure fiction. But fantasy is a way of creating a story which gives people hope even though they know it's not true. Even for people who know it's fiction and the dream, it's a story of hope. Additionally, Tomino has mentioned in interviews that he was inspired by real-world events, such as the Cold War and the political turmoil of his lifetime as well as the events of the prior world wars, which played a role in shaping the narrative of Mobile Suit Gundam. When I studied the Red Baron's career, I found that one soldier, no matter his achievements, does not affect the overall results of a war at all. I learned that from World War I. What I learned was that until that war there existed a kind of chivalry. After World War I, it just became mass conflict between the UK, France, and Prussia. There was a kind of manner in warfare, and I managed to put that into the story. I wanted to express the Christian culture. I'm angry that Japanese people know nothing about that. 
and that's why I don't want Gundam to be just merely a robot animation. There are some human aspects I like to emphasize. Furthermore, the emergence of tokusatsu, or special effects driven live action shows, significantly influenced Tomono. Classics like Ultra Q and Ultraman captivated his imagination, laying the groundwork for his later penchant for mecha and the fusion of science fiction with compelling human drama. Despite his early fascination with literature, Tomino's youthful enthusiasm also extended to the world of mechanics, intrigued by the intricate machinery of the post-war era and the technological advancements shaping the future, Tomino developed a keen interest in mechanics during his adolescence. This passion led him to dream of a future where he could contribute to the burgeoning field of technology. However, Tomino's journey took an unexpected turn when after completing his secondary education, he sought admission to a prestigious technical high school. Eager to delve into the intricacies of mechanics and engineering, Tomino's aspirations faced a harsh reality. His application was rejected. The disappointment of this rejection marked a pivotal moment in Tomino's life forcing him to reassess his path and consider alternative avenues. Undeterred by this setback, Tomino turned his attention to another facet of his interests, writing. Fueled by a desire to channel his creativity and share his imaginative visions with the world, he embarked on a journey into the realm of literature. This shift, born out of necessity, would eventually become the catalyst for the genesis of his creative genius. The rejection from the technical high school redirected Tomino's trajectory towards the written world. Delving into the world of storytelling, he found solace in crafting narratives that explored the intersections of humanity, technology, and the cosmos. As he honed his writing skills, Tomino began to immerse himself in the science fiction genre, drawing inspiration from the influx of American science fiction films that flooded Japanese cinemas during the 1950s and 1960s. Films like The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951 and 2001 A Space Odyssey from 1968 showcased futuristic concepts and advanced technology. This period also saw the release of numerous war films that explored the impact of conflicts on individuals and societies. Tomino's interest in military themes combined with his desire to convey anti-war messages may have been influenced by such films. Tomino's heightened fascination with the visual aspect of science fiction in this period eventually led him to attend Nihon University College of Art to study film, with the intention of directing his own science fiction stories. When I watched 2001 A Space Odyssey, I felt there was something missing in the movie, and I thought about how to complement it. So I wrote Idion. I am able to create work like this because I'm a craftsman who creates through combining things, rather than from a writer's standpoint. In my case, thanks to the genres of TV animation and giant robots, I was able to create Idion using 2001 A Space Odyssey as a base. However, because I was able to pull that off, I experienced a history of deterioration from there. Tomino embarked on a journey that would not only redefine his storytelling abilities, but also expose him to the technical aspects of filmmaking. This academic endeavor became a crucible for Tomino, where his passion for storytelling and his fascination with mechanics converged to create a potent foundation for his future endeavors into the world of anime. At Nihon University College of Art, Tomino found himself surrounded by a community of aspiring artists and filmmakers. The collaborative and immersive environment fostered an exchange of ideas and techniques, allowing him to further develop his creative vision. The curriculum exposed him to various cinematic styles, narrative structures, and technical intricacies of film production, providing him with the tools needed to translate his imaginative stories into visual masterpieces. Tomino's time at the film department not only equipped him with the technical skills necessary for his future career, but also broadened his artistic horizons. The exposure to diverse cinematic influences, both domestic and international, contributed to the richness and depth of his storytelling. It was during these formative years that Tomino began to weave the threads of his childhood experiences, literary influences, and a newfound cinematic knowledge into the tapestry of his creative identity. Armed with a solid foundation in filmmaking and a burgeoning passion for storytelling, Yoshiyuki Tomino set out to make his mark on the world of animation. The opportunity presented itself when he joined Mushi Productions, a pioneering animation studio founded by the god of manga Osamu Tezuka. Tezuka's influence on the anime industry was immense, and working under his guidance marked a crucial chapter in Tomino's formative years. Tomino's role at Mushi Productions involved storyboarding for various projects, including adaptations of Tezuka's iconic works. The experience of translating Tezuka's manga into animated form provided Tomino with valuable insights into the intricacies of visual storytelling. Tezuka's mentorship was a beacon for Tomino, guiding him through the nuances of animation production and fostering his growth as a storyteller. After I entered Mushi Production, about three months in, I began to wonder whether I could direct or write a script. So I started to do that, and six months later my storyboard for an original story was accepted and I got to be evolved in the directing side of things. However, I found this kind of work with animation to be a bit childish, and I wasn't sure if it would be all that gratifying. 
One of the significant projects Tomino contributed to during his time at Mushi Productions was the adaptation of Astro Boy, the iconic series known for its exploration of artificial intelligence, human-robot relations, and ethical dilemmas, became a canvas for Tomino to hone his skills in. Crafting narratives that transcended mere entertainment, the collaboration with Tezuka instilled in him a sense of responsibility towards the potential societal impact of animated stories. Tomono's exposure to Tezuka's philosophy of storytelling, which emphasized the convergence of entertainment and social commentary, left an indelible mark on his creative ethos. The experience of working on Astro Boy laid the groundwork for Tomono's future endeavors, instilling in him a commitment to using anime as a medium for exploring profound themes and societal reflections. Yoshiyuki Tomono's journey from storyboard artist to director took a significant leap when he was entrusted with his first directorial role for Triton of the Sea in 1972. This marked a pivotal moment in his career as he transitioned from adapting Tezuka's works to creating an original series. Triton of the Sea, based on Isamu Tezuka's manga, showcased Tomono's ability to helm a project and infuse in it his distinctive storytelling style. The series, set against a backdrop of a vast oceanic world, followed the adventures of Triton, a young boy with the ability to communicate with marine life. Tomano's directorial debut displayed a penchant for his intricate worldbuilding and a focus on the relationships between humans and the environment. The themes of environmentalism and the consequences of human actions on nature would become reoccurring motifs in his future works. I had a hard time familiarizing myself with the method of limited anime. I left Mushi Production and went into TV advertising as a freelancer, but that turned out to be financially difficult. In addition, I was so accustomed to desk work that at that point my body had a hard time switching to a job that was more physical. As a result, I went back into animation. It was childish work, but I could make ends meet, so as a freelancer I did subcontract work, directing and storyboarding. Following the success of Triton of the Sea, Tomino continued to push the boundaries of anime storytelling. His foray into the mecha genre came with Bray Redeen in 1975. This series, often considered a milestone in the mecha anime genre, showcased Tomino's ability to combine intense action with a historical adventure. Bray Redeen introduced audiences to a colossal robot, the titular Redeen, which could transform into a divine warrior. Taking great influence from its near contemporary Mazinger Z by Gona Gai, the series marked a departure from traditional mecha narratives by blending ancient mythological elements with futuristic technology. Tomino's creativity shone through as he crafted a narrative that explored the interplay between ancient civilizations, divine powers, and the impact of advanced technology on human destinies. In Brave Raidina, Tomino pioneered the concept of a sentient and godlike mecha, setting the stage for future mecha series that would explore the spirituality and existentialism of these colossal machines. The success of Brave Raidina not only solidified Tomino's position as a visionary director, but also contributed to the evolution of the mecha genre, paving the way for more sophisticated and thought-provoking narratives within the giant robot subgenre. Tomino's exploration of mecha anime took a mature turn with Zambot 3 from 1977 and Dice 3 from 1978. These series marked a departure from the conventional hero-centric narratives at the time, presenting audiences with morally complex characters and narratives that blur the lines between good and evil. Zambot 3 delved into the consequences of war and civilian lives, challenging the idealized image of heroes and portraying the true cost of human conflict. Tomino's narrative choices were bold and unconventional, setting the stage for the more realistic and morally grey storytelling that would define his later and less childish masterpiece Mobile Suit Gundam. Daitarn 3 continued this trend, offering a mecha series that was not just about the battles between robots, but also about the human experience. The series featured a charismatic and morally ambiguous protagonist, Banjo Haran, whose actions questioned traditional hero tropes. Daitarn 3 embraced a more sophisticated narrative combining intense action with complex character development and social commentary. So from around 1977 onwards I started to do mecha related stories and from then on I was integrally involved in checking all the stories and productions. I felt that because of all the studying I'd done up to that point I could do a much different job, without making it like some kind of Marvel film series. Within the restrictions placed upon these productions, I tried to move them away from being inherently childish and to make it closer to an adult film in terms of its approach and depth. The culmination of Yoshiyuki Tomino's creative evolution and storytelling prowess reached its zenith with the groundbreaking release of Mobile Suit Gundam. Launched in 1979, this iconic anime not only revolutionized the mecha genre, but also left an indelible mark on the entire anime landscape. Mobile Suit Gundam departed from the established norms of mecha anime in several ways. One of the most significant innovations was the realistic portrayal of war and its impact on individuals and society. Unlike its predecessors, Gundam did not inherently glorify the heroic exploits of its giant robot pilots. Instead, it delved into the harsh realities of war, exploring the emotional and psychological toll it took in its characters. 
the series introduced the concept of mobile suits, humanoid robots piloted by humans, as the primary weapons of war. These mobile suits, including the iconic RX-782 Gundam, were not invincible supermachines. They suffered damage, required maintenance, and most importantly, were operated by ordinary individuals thrust into the chaos of war. This humanization of the mecha genre added a layer of complexity and relatability that resonated with audiences. There are things created in times of peace that were then used for warfare instead. A great example of this is dynamite, which was first developed to help with mining and since you turn around and they're using it on the battlefield. So I feel like even in stories aimed for children, if I were to incorporate war in it, that I couldn't depict a happy ending. That's not what happens in real life. When giant robots came into being in Japan, it was a pure entertainment medium for kids. Even though some of these projects involved war, I had about five years of working on such things, but I just got tired of it. But because I got tired of it, that resulted in Gundam. But I didn't want to keep making things for kids that were supposed to be purely entertainment. Furthermore, Mobile Suit Gundam broke away from the episodic nature of many anime at the time, adopting a serialized storytelling format. The continuous narrative allowed for character development, intricate plotlines, and the exploration of socio-political themes on a scale previously unseen in mecha anime. Tomino's commitment to portraying the consequences of war, the complexities of human relationships, and the blurred lines between protagonists and antagonists set Gundam apart as a mature and thought-provoking series. The political landscape within the Gundam universe mirrored the geopolitical tensions of the real world. Addressing issues such as colonialism, authoritarianism, and the ethics of warfare, Tomino's script writing skillfully wove these themes into the fabric of the narrative, creating a compelling and thought-provoking storyline that transcended the confines of traditional anime storytelling. From the perspective of energy, the series is set in a time where humans can no longer dig for coal and oil on Earth. Instead, they must rely on solar energy. They've managed to develop the technology to store solar energy in battery form, and in this world, they've decided not to allow the production of these solar-charged photon batteries on Earth itself. They know if they promote industrialization, it would lead to using the Earth's resources, so they do it in space. In this series, space colonists manufacture the photon batteries and lower them down to Earth by a space elevator for distribution. The design process of the Gundam was a meticulous and visionary endeavor conceived by the mechanical designer Kunio Okawara, for the original Mobile Suit Gundam series in the late 1970s. The Gundam's appearance was shaped by a blend of artistic creativity and practical considerations. Okawara drew inspiration from various sources, including military hardware, science fiction, and even samurai armor. The result was a revolutionary design that broke away from traditional robot aesthetics, featuring a sleek and humanoid silhouette with distinctive features such as the iconic V-shaped antenna on its head. The Gundam's design not only aimed for visual appeal but also considered functionality, ensuring a balance between agility and firepower in its combat capabilities. The meticulous attention to detail in the Gundam's design has left an immense mark on popular culture, cementing its status as an enduring symbol of mecha anime. The success of Mobile Suit Gundam was not immediate, and the series faced challenges during its initial run. However, the introduction of model kits known as Gunpla played a pivotal role in the resurgence of the franchise. The ability for fans to recreate and customize the iconic mobile suits from the series ignited a cultural phenomenon that continues to thrive to this day. I always thought Gundam would hit, whether it was in Japan or around the world. I always carried this feeling that I had lost to some rival in that regard. When it hit the US, I felt like saying, see, this is what I've been talking about to all my critics in Japan. The impact of Gundam extended beyond the realms of entertainment. Its success laid the foundation for the Gundam franchise, encompassing numerous sequels, spin-offs, and alternate universes. The popularity of Gundam also contributed to the rise of the real robot subgenre within mecha anime, influencing subsequent series that adopted a more realistic and nuanced approach to the use of giant robots in warfare. Following the groundbreaking release of Mobile Suit Gundam, Yoshiyuki Tomono continued to explore new frontiers in anime storytelling. The 1980s witnessed the emergence of several ambitious projects that showcased Tomono's versatility as a director and storyteller. One such notable work was Space Runaway Idion, a series that ventured into the realms of space opera and existentialism. Space Runaway Idion, which aired in 1980, presented a narrative that went beyond the confines of Earth. Tomino crafted a complex story that explored the mysteries of the universe, the consequences of human actions, and the enigmatic idiom itself. The series delved into philosophical and existential themes, challenging the traditional boundaries of anime storytelling. The tragic and thought-provoking nature of idiom further solidified Tomino's reputation as a director, unafraid to tackle profound and complex subject matter. It is thanks to the existence of Gundam that I have a somewhat stable life, so I'm frankly grateful on that end. On the other hand, idiom is a work that gives me pride. The Tomino who made such a thing is amazing. 
Following Idion, Tomino directed Exo Bungle in 1982, a departure from the space opera genre. This series embraced a more light-hearted and comedic tone, exploring themes of survival and societal structures in a post-apocalyptic world. Exo Bungle showcased Tomino's ability to transition between different narrative styles, demonstrating his versatility as a director. Aura Battler Dunbine from 1983 marked another significant addition to Tomino's diverse portfolio, combining elements of mecha and fantasy. The series transported viewers to the mystical world of Bison Well, where giant robots known as Aura Battlers played a central role in the ongoing conflict. Tomino's fusion of mecha with elements of high fantasy demonstrated his willingness to experiment with genres, further expanding the horizon of anime storytelling. In the mid-1980s, Tomino ventured into the realm of science fiction once again with Heavy Metal L Game. Airing in 1984, the series presented a futuristic narrative set in space colonies and featured the innovative use of psychodrama and political intrigue. L Game showcased Tomino's ability to weave intricate plotlines and explore the complexities of power dynamics within a speculative setting. The series featured a strong emphasis on character development, with protagonists facing moral dilemmas and questioning their roles in the larger conflict. Tomino's commitment to portraying multifaceted characters and delving into the psychological aspects of warfare set El Game apart as a thought-provoking and engaging addition to the sci-fi anime landscape. As the 1980s progressed, Tomino returned to the Gundam universe with Mobile Suit Gundam in 1985, serving as a direct sequel to the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Zeta Gundam expanded upon the themes introduced in its predecessor. The series continued to explore the consequences of war, political intrigue, and the moral complexities of conflict. Zeta Gundam introduced a new generation of characters who were revisiting familiar faces from the original series. Tomino's storytelling evolved, presenting a narrative that delved deeper into the psychological toll of war on individuals. The series also addressed themes of identity, betrayal, and the cynical nature of conflict, adding layers of complexity to the Gundam narrative. Moreover, Zeta Gundam introduced the concept of transforming mobile suits, as well as the Titans faction, which added a new dimension to the mecha battles. This innovative approach further solidified Tomino's reputation as a pioneer in the mecha genre, continually pushing the boundaries of what could be achieved within the medium. Tomino directed Mobile Suit Gundam ZZ from 1986 to 1987, a series that served as a direct sequel to Zeta Gundam. ZZ Gundam played a role in bridging narrative gaps and expanding the Gundam universe. Additionally, Tomino was involved in the creation of the movie Mobile Suit Gundam Char's Counterattack from 1988, a feature film that continued the saga of Char as a Nabla and Amaro Ray. These works added layers to the Gundam narrative, further exploring the consequences of war, evolving character dynamics, and pushing the boundaries of mecha storytelling in the 1980s. Yoshiyuki Tomono's exploration of the Gundam universe continued to thrive with Mobile Suit Victory Gundam in 1993 as the capstone to the Universal Century timeline, the classic Gundam universe. Victory Gundam marked the culmination of Tomono's storytelling prowess within the Gundam franchise. The series delved into the cynical nature of conflict, exploring the reoccurring patterns of war and the impact on future generations. Tomino's storytelling transcended the traditional boundaries of anime, offering a nuanced and mature narrative that confronted complex socio-political issues. Victory Gundam was a testament to Tomino's ability to evolve his storytelling while maintaining the core themes that defined the Gundam franchise. Beyond Gundam, Tomino's diverse portfolio showcases his versatility as a director. From space operas to fantasy realms, he has navigated various genres, consistently challenging the expectations of anime enthusiasts. His commitment to storytelling as a medium for social commentary has set a standard for anime creators seeking to engage audiences on a deeper level. The rise of Gunpla models, Gunpla, a portmanteau of Gundam plastic model, refers to the intricate and highly detailed model kits that allow fans to recreate the iconic mobile suits from the Gundam series. The introduction of Gunpla marked a transformative moment in the relationship between anime creators and their audience. While Mobile Suit Gundam faced initial challenges in terms of viewership, the release of model kits breathed new life into the franchise. Fans were not only passive consumers of the narrative, but also active participants in its creation. The very first fans of the original Gundam were young women, definitely not the Pla model enthusiasts. With both Gundam and Raideen, of the first fans to be active, 90% were girls. Among a gathering of 1,000 fans, about 100 were boys. Around when the first core ended, young women began to gather to the after-recording studio. It took much later for the male fans to make an uproar. Around the time the series got cancelled, I thought, you're late to the party. When the movies were screening, we had many male fans who got into Gundam by the Gunpla. Come to see it. Meanwhile, the girls who had been fans since the TV series aired got together to create their own world via fanzines. Fans, never interacting with each other, existed on separate planes. 
The success of Gunpla not only bolstered the Gundam franchise financially, but also solidified its position as a cultural phenomenon. The model kits became a bridge between the fictional world of anime and the real-world creative pursuits of its fans. This cultural bridge, in turn, played a pivotal role in establishing Gundam as a lasting and influential franchise. After the culmination of the Universal Century timeline with Mobile Suit Victory Gundam in 1993, Tomino continued to explore new frontiers in anime storytelling. His involvement in projects such as Turner Gundam from 1999 to 2000 showcased his ability to evolve with the times while maintaining the core themes that defined his earlier works. Turner Gundam marked a departure from the militaristic settings of previous Gundam series, presenting a unique blend of science fiction and a world in the midst of an industrial revolution, illustrating Tomino's willingness to experiment with narrative settings. While Yoshiyuki Tomino remains integral to the Gundam legacy, other talented creators have significantly contributed to the franchise's expansion. Gundam Wing from 1995, directed by Masashi Ikeda, introduced a new set of characters and intricate political landscapes. Mitsuo Fukuda directed Mobile Suit Gundam Seed from 2002 to 2003, offering a reimagining of the original Gundam narrative. Tatsuyuki Nagai's Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans from 2015 to 2017 delved into darker themes. These works, beyond Tomino's directorial influence, showcased the collaborative and evolving nature of the Gundam franchise, resonating with diverse audiences. Furthermore, Tomino's ventures extended beyond the Gundam universe. His involvement in Overman King Gainer from 2002 to 2003 and Brain Powered from 1998 to 1999 demonstrated his versatility as a director, exploring themes of environmentalism and the consequences of human actions. These series, while not as universally acclaimed as Gundam, showcased Tomino's ability to tackle diverse subjects and genres with his signature storytelling depth. In addition to his directorial pursuits, Tomino remained an influential figure in the anime industry, offering insights into the creative process and the socio-political aspects of his storytelling. His presence at industry events and interviews continued to inspire aspiring creators, reinforcing the idea that anime could be a powerful medium for addressing complex issues and societal reflections. In the latter part of the 2000s, Tomino directed Mobile Suit Gundam 00 from 2007 to 2009, a series set in an alternate timeline that explores the impact of war and the dynamics between different factions. Although not directly connected to the original Gundam continuity, Gundam 00 continued Tomino's tradition of addressing socio-political issues through the lens of mecha-anime. Tomino's influence persisted into the 2010s with his involvement in the creation of Gundam Reconquista in G from 2014 to 2015. This series marked his return to the Universal Century timeline, offering a fresh perspective on the Gundam universe. Reconquista in G maintained Tomino's trademark focus on political intrigue and social commentary, while introducing a new generation of characters and mobile suits. I'm getting old, and I'm not happy about that, but I'm happy to have received a lot of compliments from people and so there's nothing I'm really dissatisfied with. It's a difficult state of mind. I'm going to crush Kimitsu no Yaiba. I'm going to destroy Evangelion. As Yoshiyuki Tomino's life reached its later chapters, his influence remained imprinted on the medium he had dedicated his career to shaping. The legacy of the visionary director endures not only in the annals of anime history, but also in the creative spirit of storytellers who continue to draw inspiration from his groundbreaking contributions. Yoshiyuki Tomino's impact on anime extends far beyond the confines of his directorial years, leaving a great mark on the very essence of the medium he helped elevate to unprecedented heights.